All right, what's going on, everybody? Uh, it's a little bit of a weird video, I know, uh, to be making uh, um, in my car, but I've been super busy. Uh, I have a bunch of like uh, uh, you know, stuff going on, um, so I'm, I'm making this on my way back from work. I thought I just thought it was kind of funny to, to, to do. You know, I listen, I'm a big listener of uh, uh, Mark Rose Orders Drive to Work podcast. This is my drive uh, from work. Um, so my my work attire and. Uh, so yeah, so I'm making this video now because we had a huge announcement from the Commander uh, of Rules Committee uh, banning four cards from the format, um, and we're going to talk about that, uh, but yeah, I'm making this video now also because I was going to, to make it um, you know, over the weekend, but we're likely to have a hurricane uh, here in Florida, so uh, hopefully that does not happen, or does not happen too badly, but anyways, uh, make this video on my phone just while I'm driving, so again, apologies for the, the weird uh, format. Uh, hopefully you guys, you know, uh, like uh, accompanying me on my drive here as I uh, chat about uh, the four cards banned uh, from the format completely out of the blue. Um, the first one I'll talk about, which is really, really quick, uh, Nadu Winged Wisdom, um, you know, was a super dominant card uh, in CDH and also was, was leaking over into uh, casual space after being banned uh, in uh, pretty much uh, every single, uh, or sorry, not every single, the, the modern format, um, and uh, just kind of being a, a, a broken uh, card that was a, a huge mistake. Again, I, since the very beginning of, uh, um, you know, seeing its effect on the game, was an advocate for just removing it from Magic uh, entirely, and uh, that's pretty much what they've done. Uh, there's not really too many other scenarios where not is going to play, uh, and I'm very much in favor of that. Um, Again, I think a card like Nadu, again, kind of going along with the, the Paradox Engine in, uh, example, uh, just being an absolute uh, annoying card uh, when, you know, someone is just taking a super, super long turn and you're not even really sure if they're actually going to win, uh, right? They could win, but you're, it's, it's technically non-deterministic. And so uh, you kind of have to just sit there and wait. Um, again, I play at the CDH level, and the CDH level, it's annoying for me. I hate, I hate it playing against the deck. And so I can only imagine at the casual level that it's just as annoying. Um, so very happy to see Nadu go. I don't think anyone is super cut up about um, that removal, uh, especially given that they indicated uh, earlier on, um, you know, that they were going to be monitoring Nadu's uh, effect on the format. And uh, so that's, that's nothing too crazy. However, uh, they have also banned three other cards that are uh, quite powerful at the CDH level and apparently have been making waves uh, or have been prevalent at the casual level, although I'll talk about my experience, which I had not seen. Um, this also, by the way, in the wake of uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, commander uh, you know, ban list, uh, I'm sorry, the, the, the uh, potential CEDH uh, community making their own ban list and uh, that all the fallout from there. Again, I talked a little bit about that in uh, a previous video. Um, so, yeah, kind of a, a weird situation um, there and a lot of people making speculations and, and putting their tinfoil hats on. I'm going to kind of try to abstain from doing that, but we'll kind of talk about that. Um, but yes, banning uh, Dockside Extortionist Jeweled Lotus and Mana Crypt. So three very powerful cards. Um, obviously, Dockside Extortionist, uh, one of the um, key keynote cards of uh, the CEDH format. Um, just a lot of decks uh, using that card um, for uh, the explosive treasure generation. Uh, to the point where people have put cards in their decks specifically to search uh, for it, like Goblin Atron uh, or Imperial Recruiter, and uh, also uh, adding clone effects into their decks simply in order to copy or to further uh, use uh, Dockside Extortionist. Uh, Dockside Extortionist powerful ETB ability. Um, so, again, interesting to note that for me, I kind of view that card as a CDH card, and I don't never really viewed that as being a problematic card in the casual space. Again, I was an advocate for banning it because it was affecting the CEDH meta um, at, the, at the highest levels, and I do not would not have perceived that it would be a particularly relevant card to look at in the casual space. Um, I just, you know, in the casual spaces, if someone's playing it, it's probably not doing 
um, too much disgusting things, uh, probably using it, it'll probably make a decent amount of treasures, and it might uh, make a couple of, um, or sorry, allow you to make uh, a couple of plays ahead of schedule, but no one is really uh, abusing Dockside, at least in the way that it was at the CD. Uh, Jewel Lotus, on the other hand, is apparently a card that is uh, uh, making way was making waves in the casual space. Uh, obviously, a lot of people are building their decks around their commanders and wanting to uh, play with their powerful commanders um, and get them out ahead of schedule. Obviously, at the CDH level, still quite good. Um, obviously, both of my uh, uh, main staple commanders of, of Vadric and Stella Lee uh, really wanting to get their commander out as soon as possible. Obviously, Malcolm decks, Timna decks, uh, Blue Farm. Uh, a lot of these decks taking advantage of Jeweled Lotus uh, as basically a Black Lotus. Um, and so, obviously, like if you understand that comparison, uh, you'll kind of see like how powerful it can be. Um, but, uh, yeah, so the, the big thing here is that with Jewel Lotus, um, Jewel Lotus is only playable in Commander, and it was designed and printed for a Commander, and so it's quite strange to, um, see that happen. Um, and again, for people that aren't really aware, this is coming from the, the RC, which is, does not have direct ties to Wizards of the Coast, so it, it makes sense in the sense that Wizards is the one that printed it, but the RC is the one that decided that it was too much. So I, I can understand the disconnect there. It's more of, I guess, maybe this should be a message to wizards to not print stuff like this. Um, so yeah, I, 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 I don't know how else to really um, say that. Um, a lot, again, a lot of people saying they should have never printed the card to begin with. Uh, but then there's the question of why is it being banned now and not uh, sooner? Uh, like on release, uh, like they did with Lutri, uh, right? Lutri, a card that was printed for standard or for modern or for, for constructed reasons or, uh, and was uh, pre-banned in Commander uh, because they understood, you know, that they're going to print this card and they can they know that it's just not a, a healthy card to have in the Commander format and so they just go ahead and pre-ban it. Um, obviously, again, this doesn't really work in the case of Dual Lotus because it was designed for Commander. Um, so, yeah. And then Mana Crypt is the biggest one on uh, uh, that is kind of irritating people because it is uh, a main staple in CDH. It is kind of the card that I view as the, the hallmark of what can make your deck a CDH deck. Um, not in the sense that if you have this card in your deck, you're instantly uh, a good CDH deck. It's just more of, it's the mentality of you're putting the best cards in your deck and Mana Crypt is one of them. And so if you have Mana Crypt in your deck, the casual space, I think that's inappropriate, whereas at the, at the CEDH level, you need to be playing Mana Crypt if you want to compete at that same level. So, obviously, that being, as you can see, I, I, I view this as a ban against the CEDH format, um, and I'll, I'll clarify what I mean by that uh, in, in a moment, um, and yeah, just generally pissing people off, because all three of these cards, Dockside, Jewel Lotus, and Mana Crypt, uh, uh, held a very high price point. And mostly that was obviously related to uh, their playability in Commander. Um, obviously, Dockside and Jewel Lotus are, are exclusively Commander printed cards. Obviously, Dockside is legal in Legacy and Vintage, but Dockside really does not see any play from my understanding there. Again, it is a primarily, um, almost exclusively a Commander card. And obviously, Jewel Lotus does not function anywhere outside of exactly Commander. Uh, there's no other formats where it's relevant in. Whereas Mana Crypt, obviously, like, there are some formats where you can play it in, um, even if, uh, again, its primary uh, uh, um, reason for having the, the monetary price that it does of about, you know, $200, um, that, the reason for that is that it exists uh, as a good card in Commander. Uh, so really, really pissing a lot of people off today and yesterday. Sorry, it happened yesterday talking about it today. And uh, uh, yeah, because basically just kind of nuking uh, people's wallets. Uh, the price of Dockside Jewel Lotus has shot down like almost like um, overnight. Um, Mana Crypt, I haven't checked up on it uh, recently, but um, my guess is it's it's gone down a little bit, um, while probably not not being as affected as the others. Um, so let's talk about. Um, 
why they did this, at least in their stated reasonings. Obviously, not do we know about, right? But their stated reasonings for banning Dockside, Drew Lotus, and Manicrit are um, the speed at which you can do things, right? Obviously, all three of these cards are accelerants that allow you to do things ahead of schedule. Obviously, Dockside and Mana Crypt are a little bit more generic, whereas Drew Lotus is specifically for your commander. So, um, that is their stated goal. And then, obviously, when we talk about Mana Crypt, they talked about the elephant in the room of Soul Ring. And why would you ban Mana Crypt and not ban Soul Ring um, if you're talking about reducing the amount of accelerants in the format? Um, and their explanation for not banning Soul Ring is just Soul Ring is an iconic card in Commander. It's the only place you can actually play it besides Vintage, if I am uh, correct. All right, it's banned in, in Legacy, and I think it's restricted in Vintage. Um, so, you know, really there's no other place for you to, to use your copies of Soul Ring um, outside of exactly, um, uh, exactly Commander. So, I do understand that. I do like. I know a lot of people like the card soaring. Uh, I like to have their fancy copies. I obviously have my my fancy copy of it. Um, but yeah, it, it doesn't really make sense to me. Um, and then especially when you consider all the other uh, powerful mana uh, generation accelerants um, that can exist in Commander. Um, you know, you have Box Diamond, uh, Chromox, Box Opal. Uh, you know, are, are just some of the, a mana vault uh, as, as just some of the examples. So yeah, I, I, I don't really see the reasoning for banning uh, mana crypt outside of what we'll kind of talk about, which is again, that a lot of people feel like, and even the casuals feel like this was an improper banning uh, and mostly was just aimed at uh, uh, the CEDH community. Uh, but again, there's that is pure speculation. There is no uh, confirmation of that. There's no evidence directly to support that. Um, it's just mostly the the CEDH community feels that um, you know this was this was uh, uh, basically just a way to kind of kind of shun uh, the CEDH community um, as they previously stated that they don't want to um, have CEDH be a supported part of the. Um, of the not the not the format, but the the banning considerations. In the past, they've banned a card like Flash, but they've stated that that was not for CDH. They, that that was for for everyone. Although again, no one was really playing Flash to my knowledge. Um, and outside of that, they have not banned any card um, in order to assist uh, in the CEDH meta game. Um, so that being said, where do we kind of go from here? Um, at least in the cases of, of casual and, and also like I'm going to talk about CDH as well because again I know there's, there's some people who uh, are again only casual players but I know there's a couple of people like me who do engage with both. Um, so obviously I don't have any decks that played any of the uh, like three cards that were banned here. Uh, I, no decks, not no single uh, of my casual decks read either Dockside, Drew Lotus, or Mana Crypt uh, in any way shape or form. Nor would they would they ever. I would have no plans. Even if I had a million mana crypts, I would not put them in my casual deck. Um, and again, that's where you also get into people not understanding the rule zero discussion. Um, anyways, um, so yeah, so I, I at the casual level, uh, my decks are virtually unaffected. But again, for su uh, supposedly, I've been hearing from a lot of the casual space that uh, you know they they are not a fan of these bannings because. Jewel Lotus is a card that was um, quite fun to play with, as again, a lot of people build play Commander to build a deck around a specific card, their their, their Commander, and uh, they enjoy getting that card out and and, and using it uh, ahead of schedule. So um, you know, again, I, I, that's kind of interesting. Um, so, but again, besides that, the the actual casual. Again, there's not really a meta game, but the casual space in terms of deck building is virtually unaffect, unaffected. Uh, from my perception, again, you just kind of have to. If you had Jewel Lotus, you got to cut it. Um, again, I I don't if you have Mana Crypt. You have to cut that. Um, and uh, again, red decks making use of any any treasure shenanigans uh, might have lost a, a kind of interesting piece. But um, 
yeah, I, I don't really know uh, uh, what to say uh, uh, for the casual space because, again, I don't really view any of these cards as uh, relevant to the casual space, again, with the exception of Nadu Winged Wisdom. Um, yeah. So now let's kind of talk about the ZDH space. So beforehand, before uh, these bannings, um, again, there was a discussion of banning uh, Ristic Study and then unbanning a couple of cards um, you know, for the, uh, uh for the, uh, excuse me, it's kind of like a turn here, uh, for the, um, uh, to kind of uh, get some stuff off the ban list that we think are appropriate in the, um, in the CDH space, um, things like, uh, Primeval Titan, um, Coalition Victory, which again, I, I, I don't really care about, um, in any case, um, Right, and also the, the kind of most powerful car, uh, most powerful decks, I should say, uh, in the CDH base were things like Rograk Silas, uh, Blue Farm, uh, as well as a couple of uh, uh, various um, Timna decks uh, and Tana, and uh, excuse me, uh, uh, Thrasios decks, uh, like, like uh, uh, Rograk uh, Thrasios and other things like that. Um, obviously, Rograk Silas uh, uh, being the most powerful. Um, a lot of uh, high-level players uh, winning super, super fast uh, using uh, by mulliganing super aggressively uh, in this kind of turbo uh, um, turbo deck uh, using cards like Necropotence and Necrodominance uh, to draw a bunch of cards, gaining and then using an effect like Born Upon a Win uh, to win uh, uh, all in uh, basically a two-turn cycle. Um, they also have uh, outs to things like Breach and Thoracle. Uh, they run a lot of wheel effects. And so very, very, very powerful deck. Uh, and then obviously like Blue Farm, one of the most adaptive decks uh, in the format. Um, just either can play the turbo game plan or can kind of play that mid-range game plan uh, by using its commanders for card advantage. Um, and then you had a couple of decks on the fringe. Um, you had things like Sisse uh, with a Lead Captain. Um, as you know, very adaptive deck, Italian, um, as uh, more of the control deck in the format. Um, so just kind of all, all these decks. So the big thing is that uh, a couple of these decks have uh, gotten a little bit, uh, uh, sorry, uh, have, got, have taken a hit in terms of a couple of cards, whereas other decks are almost non-existent uh, because of uh, the uh, removal of things like Lotus and Dockside Extortionist, and oh, sorry, and, and uh, all all three of these cards do different things uh, for for the scene for different uh, decks, but all of them have been hit in some kind of way. Um, so, for example, uh, Sisse and Malcolm decks relied heavily on cards on the card Dual Lotus uh, to accelerate out the commander, as uh, just Dual Lotus allowed you to cast your commander right then and there. Um, so obviously, like Mal like Jewel Lotus is one of the cards that Malcolm Kenai Navigator decks were were looking for uh, in their opener, um, and same thing for Sisse, and that tool is completely gone. Um, that doesn't. I don't know if that necessarily means that Malcolm dies. Uh, it is certainly a much, much, much weaker deck, and I I would presume that that deck does not see any high level play until the format slows down which we'll kind of talk about because si uh, Rograk Silas is virtually unaffected. And let me talk about what I mean by virtually unaffected. Um, it did not lose any part of its core game plan. Obviously it lost Dockside and uh, Mana Crypt as really good acceleration, but it still has, has plenty of other powerful effects like Dark Ritual, which can allow you to play a turn one Necropotence. So I don't think that uh, the deck in any way has, has lost uh, any of its power in relation to the format. So what that means is that the, the top deck in Rograk Silas will become even more, uh, presumably, the top deck. A lot of uh, uh, high-level CEDH players are pretty much just going around telling people, just, just go play Rograk Silas. Um, that's what we've been seeing on um, the discussion boards and everything. Um, whereas uh, a lot of fringe decks that maybe were, were brought up in power level because of the of uh, cards like Dockside, um, now again don't have that that, that same catch up mechanic. Um, so for example, uh, Dargo decks um, uh, heavily made usage of uh, Dockside as 
uh, both an accelerant and also one of their primary win conditions as uh, you assemble some form of infinite mana combo with Dockside and then use uh, your commander as, as a sacrifice outlet or as a, as a, a means of ending the game uh, from there. Um, you know, same thing goes for uh, Sisse uh, as well as uh, Kenrith, uh, the Return King. Um, all these decks, uh, you know, while they liked Dockside for the acceleration, also relied on Dockside to finish out the game. Dockside and Neil um, was a huge win condition for both for, for both Kenrith and Sisse, and so uh, again, that's just not available to them anymore. And so it's unclear exactly how they win the game now, if they're even a deck. Um, I don't know. I don't have a good answer to that. Um, so, yeah, and then you have a deck like that I play, like Vadric and, and Stella Lee, which were underpowered to begin with, right? Vadric was already kind of struggling, in my opinion, um, to kind of compete in the, the turbo, um, as, again, uh, unless you have a turn two Vadric, um, you know, you, you're, you're going to be playing Vadric on turn, uh, on turn three, um, hoping to make it around, uh, and then even then, you know, it's, it's, it's not like you just win the game. So that deck, like in in a in uh, against a really good hand from uh, Rogsai, um, might just fumble right there. Um, again, I haven't played too much um, in in the current, I guess in the in the current or I should get now previous meta um, with with Vadric. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it's it's been rough. Um, so yeah, Vadric just kind of lost three ways where it could accelerate out Vadric. Uh, same thing for Stella Lee, so it's unclear if, if these types of decks are even uh, feasible in the CBH format um, anymore. Uh, again, I have some ideas brewing. You have things like Gold Hound and uh, Skirt Prospector to kind of allow for more opportunities to turn to Vadric. Um, I may go back to uh, a build where I'm using Ancient Tomb and a, um, um, you know, Signets uh, to kind of uh, get the better turn two Vadric or turn three with counter magic up. Um, there's a couple of different things that I'm, that I'm thinking about, but yeah, a lot of these decks are, are quite hurt uh, by the bannings um, that we've had. And so this begs the question of why did they do this? So some are uh, um, speculating that, again, this was done to kind of uh, push uh, CEDH uh, further away from, from Commander. Um, there is talk again at one point of separating the formats by having the casual format be its own be its own thing as in its current state and then the CEDH format would separate and have its own banned list um, so again presumably unbanning and banning cards that they think are appropriate. Um, and so maybe this is an incentive by uh, uh, the RC to, to, to have the CEDH community do that. Uh, again, I'm not saying one way or the other whether I think that's actually what the case is. Again, I have absolutely no idea. Um, but uh, what I will say is that, again, even the casual space does not seem to like this. And again, it kind of pissed off the community as, again, people have spent money on their Jewel Lotuses and their Dock Sides and everything and they're just gone. They are pretty much worthless uh, pieces of cardboard at this point. Um, and that always tends to happen um, for bannings, but in this case, it's it's pretty potent because these are cards that were designed for Commander and don't really have much, much uses elsewhere. So yeah, I don't really have much else to say um, about how I feel about it, I guess. Again, there's, there's other potential explanations. I do agree that like, you know, we probably want to slow things down in the casual space um obviously the the, the thing that makes commander uh fun at the casual level is is everyone kind of getting to do their thing and when somebody else has dockside and nobody else does it's pretty annoying uh but again my response to that would be you shouldn't be playing dockside at the casual level um in any case um yeah i can't really think about too many other reasons why I would you would ban these cards. Um, again, most people are okay with Nadu going. It's mainly the, 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 the these three that are um, kind of having people turn their heads. Um, um, so, yeah. Um, so let me get on to, you know, what is the CEDH community actually going to do? 
Um, so what I can tell you is that my shop uh, uh, here, um, I've, I've spoken with um, you know the, the, the tournament organizers, um, at least for the foreseeable future, uh, we're gonna wait until October to actually implement the ban that they actually just gave. Uh, we're gonna let people play with their decks for a little bit because um, it kind of sucks when your deck gets banned and you're kind of kind of preparing for tournaments and everything. Um, although I have seen other tournaments running this weekend that are um, going right along with this ban. Um, but in any case, uh, so we're gonna wait until October and then after October uh, is, is done, uh, we're gonna be adhering to this ban list. Um, but again, we're still exploring uh, ways in which we can have our own ban list. Um, and there's, again, the the need for, or the, sorry, the, 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 the discussion about a separate ban list or a separate format has been reignited. It kind of fell off, um, again, after the this kind of uh, kerfuffle with uh, Top Deck. So that's been reignited. So it's certainly possible that in, uh, in a couple of uh, weeks I'll be talking, uh, I'm making another video where I'm talking about uh, the new format or the new ban list. Um, that um, that has risen in response uh, to the bannings that has happened. Um, obviously, I want to uh, uh, take this time to to tell people, like you know, to, to be friendly to both both CEDH and casual players, as well as the RC. Um, again, everyone's just trying to do their best, um, and there's no reason to like you know be um, you know making threats to people or kind of attacking people. Um, obviously, like the internet is uh, a pretty brutal place, so I just want to kind of limit those interactions. Um, you know, they're they're just doing their job. They're just trying to make the correct um, um, you know, decisions here. And also, if there's anyone to blame, I think it would be Wizards for printing these cards in the first place. Um, again, there's been a, 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 a kind of underlying discussion about designing for Commander. Um, I'm not going to talk about that here, but again, I, I think there's a there's a discussion to be had about if Wizards is going to continue to um, cater to the Commander format, we need to have a discussion about, you know, what does that look like and uh, how can we kind of um, communicate to them, like, what cards we, we would like to see if they are going to continue to design for Commander. So uh, that's kind of my update. Um, I just wanted to come and talk about it. Um, again, there's not really much that we can do because, again, for now, Commander and CEDH are synonymous. Whether that um, continues to be the case, again, we'll see. Um, but for now, yeah, that is uh, the ban list, so the meta is going to be quite shaken up. Uh, a lot of decks, again, just probably aren't going to be as viable as Rogarak Silas or Blue Farm um, or other decks that were pretty much unaffected by the Dockside uh, and uh, Dual Lotus bans. Um, so yeah, guys, that's going to do it for me. I got to have uh, apologies about the weird format, uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you do, I mean, maybe I could do more. Uh, I'm not against just, just rec recording in my car. I'm just on my phone recording. So uh, I could definitely do more of that. But um, yeah, remember to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.